Since the early 60s, we've become familiar with stories of people who say they've seen something unidentifiable in our skies, and subsequently, either through dreams or through hypnosis, believe they've been abducted by aliens. Now, if the victim was alone and there's no other evidence, it's easy to dismiss such cases. But if two people report identical experiences and other witnesses can support their account, what then? This story is told to us by Carol and her daughter Helen. I was in the bathroom at 5.35am. I looked out the window, which was only half open, and saw a brilliant blue-white light. I too saw this light from my bedroom window. I sat on the edge of the bed, waiting for an explosion, but nothing happened. Taylor? Yeah. What time are you coming in last night? It was last. Yeah. What have you got on today, then? You've got much to do. No, we've got a lot of orders to get out. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's a round object, solid object. It was a, a creamy white, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was, uh, it's sort of the, on the side, it's sort of got like a bit cut out, and it, just a sort of a tiny thing sticking out at the end of it. And because uh, it had this light that coming from it. from it, and that was very bright. And I thought, well, that's no helicopter or plane. You know, I thought it's a UFO. I remember just staying up, looking at it, and thought, you know, it's just amazing what we'd seen. Just barely seconds it seemed to be on us. And then next week we sort of this beam of light went back up into this smoke affecting. And we sort of stood here just a gat. Mm. Well I've known Carol and Helen ever since I've been here, that's nearly eleven years. And I've never known them to be late at all. Never. Well, we walked up to work and we always waved to the security guard and we always checked to see Hi what girls. time it is. Uh, when they arrive, I have to log them in on my duty, anybody that comes in, in fact. And they were over an hour late when I logged them in, so I noticed the time specifically, like. All right, John. <laughs> when we looked that morning, there was no clock on that wall, none at all. None at all. It was completely bare. Maybe they're having it fixed then. Well, this clock that's behind me, <coughs> it's a master clock for all the factory. It's been here for donkey's years, even before I started work. And uh, they swore this clock just wasn't there when they arrived. Well, we came home in the morning, I've just got up myself. They're coming, they were vis visibly shocked about something and asked them what, what was the matter. And they reckon they'd seen something. They couldn't quite explain what they'd seen. They just seemed that shocked and said, explain they've seen something. And we said, what have you seen? They're just something in the sky. And then the light said, we think it was a UFO. And they've also they had the appeared to have a glow about and they've seen what it's like you burn up, it's like radiation burning. All the hair was wet, and then yeah. his coat was wet, wasn't it? And he said, yeah. what's your face? Your face is all it's pink. Sunburn. And then he looked down at the rounds, all the parts of the body that wasn't covered was just like a very slight sunburn. Yeah, well, when we come into the house, we're sort of excited telling everybody all about it. And uh, that's when I sort of thought, fingers look sort of red. And as the day wore on, they sort of got redder. And uh, then I looked at my neck, and I could see sort of a, a V sort of like the all coloured in from there to there with the neck of being. And my hair, it was just sort of really 
tacky and, you know, sort of like I got loads of lacquer and I'd back combed it. It felt, you know, really sort of, really funny. And I couldn't, I couldn't remember all my fingers through. It was sort of all bitter. And then mm. you said about your jackets. I mean, yeah. Well, I noticed that my jacket was wet and very sticky. It's the jacket I had on. And it was all across the back part and the shoulder, sort of all, as if it had been melted, not melting. It was very sticky and like on my arms. And yet that morning it wasn't raining at all, it was just a very clear morning. So I said to my sister and my mother, well, try drawing what you've seen. I tried drawing in a separate room. And see what happens, they both did come back exactly the same thing, they drew practically the same thing. That was, a, that was the most astonishing thing. This is what we saw, it's sort of a, a round object. The spaceship, what we've seen, was sort of like round. sort of going flat, more or less to the, the top of it, with a sort of a thing, just... You know, it's sort of like a bit missing. And then there was a beam of light, which come all the way down. A torch shining. And we sort of held each other in this beam of light. I was standing here, and my mum was on the other side of me there, and we sort of held each other. We got it back into the moon. They know uh, something very, very strange had happened to them going to work, but uh, it was something they couldn't account for, and of course it went into the back of their minds. Until one day they actually saw a newspaper article which referred to the alien abduction phenomenon, and they found that the things written in this newspaper were almost identical to what had occurred with them. As a result of this, they contacted me and told me what had occurred, what they remembered, and I interviewed them at length on this, and I was fairly happy in my own mind by what they told me things they couldn't possibly have known, um, that there seemed to be an alien abduction involved. We, we was really nervous. In fact, we were really frightened of doing this regression. We, mm. we heard so many strange stories, didn't we? I felt so emotional to think I was literally going up and then next to me I was sort of in this spacecraft and it's, it's just I couldn't believe it myself and I was thinking, I'm there. What does it look like? It's a uh, small bit. Regression is, is a form of hypnosis where you go uh, back in time so that an individual has had an experience in the past which they maybe have forgotten for whatever reason. Uh, you take them back to the time and regressive hypnosis can actually bring back the memories of the things that are being forgotten. Tell me about the room. It's white. It's so white. It's like it's round. I can see Helen. She's on a board. It's shaped like a table, like a school table. There's something on the ceiling. It looks like operating something which will come down. My eyes, they're looking into my eyes. It feels like a burning sensation in my eye. They look like grey people. I think more white than there was grey, like in the big um, almond eyes, very big. And, um, you can either see a nose, but you know, you know a nose was there, and a mouth, mm. and sometimes the mouth was not there. Mm. And other times, you know, there's sort of a line. In fact, sometimes you can see like a, a only tiny mm. red line there. He's touching my face, touching my hair now. Looking at my heart. They're looking at my eyes. What basically is happening is people are being examined medically. They're having toenails removed, they're having hair removed, they're having skin samples removed. I think what impressed me most about this case is the fact that when they were under hypnosis at separate times, the stories, the graphic descriptions, the things that were done to them were absolutely identical. What they did to one person, they did to another person. His skin feels wet. He's put his hand on my face. My face feels wet. It's cold. I'm in a dark room now. I've got my clothes on and my jacket. I call out then for my mum. I'm happy I saw that UFO in the morning instead of seeing that. It's just so fantastic. But I thought of being abducted. In a way, I wish it hadn't that and I wish it wasn't us. Because people tend to think, yeah, it's just, you know, mad or... Some people do think we're mad. We've heard people, you know, you hear them say, but we know we're not mad. We both was together that day and we know what we saw. 
So is there a conventional scientific explanation for what happened to Carol and Helen that morning? Dr Richard Wiseman, a psychologist who specialises in the paranormal, went to see them. Over the past few years, I've investigated several cases where people claim to have seen UFOs and been abducted by aliens. Many of these cases just involve one witness, and it's possible this person is lying, mistaken, or unreliable. What's impressive about this case is that not only does it involve Helen and Carol, but also several other locals who saw exactly the same phenomena. I looked out the window and saw a brilliant blue-white light. I too saw this light from my bedroom window. Could it have been a searchlight from a helicopter maybe quite a way up? I mean, we are on the flight path here. No, definitely not. Because there's no noise, and we regularly hear helicopters, and they're very noisy. Yeah. There's just no noise whatsoever. We have a, quite a lot of police helicopters around here searching for the kids and that, and it's nothing like them. It's simply all. because it was too, uh, there, there was no noise. It's too bright as well. There was no noise, and it just looked like the moon. I've never seen an helicopter shaped as the moon before. So, oh. exactly where did the light come from? It came from directly above. I think it was higher than the flat, and it just comes straight down from, from above onto us both. With some of the, the physical effects, the burns and the headaches and the, the nosebleeds, mm. I wonder whether just the stress of seeing the light could have brought some of those on. Do you think they were just stress-related? I don't, I don't think so, because we weren't stressed about it, because we, we thought it was so marvellous what we had saw. We just thought, look what we saw. We actually saw a UFO. And, I mean, we didn't even think of anything as being took away or anything. We just thought we just saw this bright light, and then we went to work. This is where Helen and Carol work. When they arrived, they said they couldn't see the clock on the wall and had lost an hour of time. I think their earlier experience in the alleyway had left them confused and dazed. One of the impressive uh, aspects of the case is that under aggression, you both came out with very similar stories. Mm. Do you think that maybe you discussed the case together before you regressed or you'd read the same books or read the same articles and that's why your stories were so similar? No, no. Because we didn't think we were before we was going to be um, regressed, we was like, both very frightened about being regressed. And um, we didn't know what sorts of things you would probably see in a spaceship or anything like that. And, you know, so we wouldn't know what to talk about together, about saying what tests they'd done or anything, because we didn't know, you know anything really about abductions then. We've read a lot about UFOs, but not abduction cases. Plus we thought, because when we were at the alleyway, we heard a rustling sound before this bright light comes, so we thought, we was going to be regressed to think that we saw something in the alleyway, what we shouldn't have saw. So we thought, was, well, I wonder what we did see. Was it going to be a green man or something really frightening? Will it frighten us? Mm. So the spaceship, for anything that was, I didn't even think about it. We didn't think that we'd been took up there. No. Now, some people think that um, hypnosis is a way of finding out true facts. Other people think that it gives people a sort of license just to fantasise and make things up. Did it feel, when you're saying these things, like a real memory? Or did it feel like... You, you, you might have been making them up. No, I felt quite emotional, really, when you're sort of looking around the room and then you see like a, a sort of a grey being come to you, sort of felt quite emotional. It was sort of mm. a bit sh like a bit of a shock, but yet sort of a, weren't, weren't so much frightened, just emotional. Mm, and to think that that had, had happened to you, you'd had them sort of tests done on you, that was sort of like frightening. To think that they could just take and sort of do tests like that on you without you having, to, you know, asking you first. And, and it is quite a, a sort of fantastic um, sort of a, account in, in, in many ways. Do you really believe that, that this really did happen and that you were abducted by aliens aboard a spaceship? Well, I don't think I'd want to make a story up like that because I wouldn't, I, I mean, I feel silly enough by saying it. So I don't think I would have said, I would have said nothing has happened because I would want to look stupid. I think sometimes uh, you feel a bit sort of, uh, oh, is it true or, you know, under hypnosis, um, it is it happening to him. But I think you, you sort of think like that because you're frightened of what people might say when you do tell them. I've seen an alien they might think, oh, she's a bit mad. I think that puts you off with you believing it fully because you're frightened of what people might think of you. I found Helen and Carol very open and friendly and I'm convinced they saw something that night and that it had a traumatic effect on them. But I also believe that they were caught in the beam of a helicopter searchlight and that the other events were the result of this rather unusual experience. But nonetheless, there are some aspects of the case like the stickiness on the jacket and on the hair which remain very difficult to explain. 
Whatever happened that morning certainly had an enormous effect on their lives, particularly Carol, who felt a strong need for change. She ended her 25-year marriage and began an educational course. Thank you. 